Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I'm here with a video all about spooky reads for Halloween. I wish I had the editing skills to be able to put on some witches cackling or some moo hoo ha ha kind of noises or just even some sort of lightning or something, but I don't. Maybe next year though. Next year I want to get behind the wizardry of editing. Anyway, I'm here to have a chat with you about some books that I would recommend to you lovely lot and also some books that I was going to read and probably will still read over the autumn into winter season because I don't believe that ghosts and all the spooky shenanigans and witches and vampires and all those things are just for Halloween. I believe they're, well, all autumn and well into winter really, which we'll talk about with some of the books that I have with me. I just wanted to say though, before I have a chat with you about all these lovely books, spooky shenanigans books, that one, they won't all be spooky in a scary way because I don't love gruesome horror always. Like I like it occasionally, but not too much. I'm probably more in films than I do books. And I don't love being really scared. I much prefer to be kind of slightly chilled, like an ice cream. Well, now ice creams are fully frozen. What's slightly chilled? Don't say a piece of old pork. Moving on. The other thing that I just wanted to say was thank you all for your advice on how to get out of a book and sort of contenty slump. I'm still slightly in it and I have to apologise because I paid no attention to any advice. I literally just stopped filming, lessened down on my reading and just enjoyed hanging out with lovely bookish people at some book festivals and other bookie events, plus hanging out with my family and stuff, and just having some time offline in the real world. I mean, imagine. Right, let's crack on to my spooky reading recommendations first before I head to a TBR. And you've been able to see this one for a little while. I'm just going to move all these down here so that there's a little bit of a surprise going on. As I mentioned, I don't always like to be properly spooked out. Sometimes I do because I'm a contrary fairy Mary, as I've said many a time before on this channel. It's much more about being chilled. Let's not stop thinking about that slide chilled pork again. I don't know where I got that from. And sorry to all of those of you who are vegetarians or vegans. I should have said a slightly chilled. I can't think of something that you slightly chill. Every thought just goes to ice cream. Every single thought. Anyway, let's move on swiftly to my first recommendation, which, as I was alluding to, is not massively spooky, but actually really did freak me out, creep me out. And I think actually that's something I really like. I do like to be creeped out, not fully spooked out. What's the difference? Let's not go into that for too long, but we can have a chat with that. We can have a chat about that in the comments down below. So the book that properly creeped me out was Leave the World Behind by Ruman Allen, which is going to be a movie on Netflix in the not too distant future, I think. This is about a couple who hire an Airbnb out of town. I think it's near New York. That's what it's sort of alluded to. Or is it Chicago? It's a big city anyway. When they're there, um, there seems to be something that's going on because like there's a bit of a problem with uh, the um, their phones and reception and stuff and the TVs are behaving a bit weirdly. And then there's a knock on the door and the people who own the house come and say, we need to stay here too. Something really bad is going on. And what that is, is constantly alluded to. And the atmosphere and the tension just builds and builds and builds. And there are a few things that happen in this that properly bothered me. They got under my skin and really freaked me out. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend this if you want something that's a bit creepy. As I would, and I will say this collection for me, because it's a short story collection, slight spoiler. There are some really creepy stories in this collection, probably the more sort of speculative ones, I guess. There are also some kind of quite, well, there's one about poo, which is kind of just disgusting in all sorts of ways. And yeah, there's a kind of, there's layers of disgust through this collection in a really interesting way. It's Cursed Bunny, by Borrowed Chung, translated by the wonderful Anton Herb. And I really, really enjoyed it. I think I raced through it a bit too much and I would like to reread it again because I think I would get more out of it. Although that said, I don't want to read the poo story ever again. I don't need to. But the one about the bunny I thought was amazing. And that has really stayed with me. And anytime I see a bunny shaped ornament, I instantly think of it and it bothers me. And uh, yeah, so I would highly recommend this collection as something wild, wacky, and a bit disgusting, but also very much thought-provoking and, yeah, grim 
in parts, in a kind of good way. Now, a book that has chilled me for years and years and years, and actually one of the things that I have seen with your recommendations for a book funk that um, came up a lot was to reread a favourite. Now, I, the reason I have not done that and will never do that again is I once reread a favourite when I was in a book funk and I was in such a bad mood, that mood seeped in to the text and I didn't enjoy it as much as I had the first time and it kind of felt like a curse coming on from cursed bunnies to cursing books. Anyway, this book is also kind of about a curse but based on a family and it has chilled me ever since I first had it read to me by my great uncle on a walking holiday where he memorised chapters and would tell me two or three sporadically throughout these long walking holidays we did when I was about like five or six, we used to learn miles a day. And the story was, and it creeped me even more when I read it in physical form to myself, The Hound of the Baskervilles by Arthur Conan Doyle, or sorry, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to give him his full title. This is about a family that believes it is cursed by a hound that is killing off members of it over generations and Sherlock Holmes gets involved and we end up on these, well, bleak moors and there's the howl of a great beast that echoes across them and it's still, even that thinking about that howl gives me the shivers and the tingles in a kind of terrified but delightfully terrified kind of way and I really, really, really love this novel. Back to short stories again and um, I should say Credit where credit's due. My mum inspired me to do this video because she did it last week and I saw her at the weekend and was talking about it and this story that's in this collection. So I would say it's much more this one particular story in this collection than the whole collection. It's Kiss Kiss by Roald Dahl and the first story in this collection is The Landlady and I read that at secondary school. We had to study it and then write our own horror and I think I wrote something called The Butcher. I was very much inspired by Point Horrors at that time. I don't think I ripped a Point Horror off but it was definitely like of that oeuvre. I don't think my teacher got it. Anyway, she lost it, so it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, the landlady really bothered me. I won't give too much away other than it involves taxidermy. And whenever I smell almonds, I think of this. And I think that must be a sign for certain books that really like, even on like a windy, creepy night, I'll think I can hear a howl and it gives me the shiver of the hand of the Baskervilles. Then we have Kiss Kiss and the landlady that that smell really brings that to the fore and with Cursed Bunny, the title story, it is every time I see an ornament that's bunny shaped that I get a bit of a ooh. So um, yeah, now moving on to something a little bit different. Now this is supernatural in the terms, in terms of the fact that it is witchy and I think as well as reading books that chill you to the core, it's also a really nice time of year to read books that feature witches or vampires or ghosts or a whole host of supernatural spirits and spectres and beings and monsters and all those things. And Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson is an absolute witchy romp. It gave me vibes of, well, one, I love the whole 90s nostalgia and the Spice Girls element, that's very much me, but this also had a feeling of slightly like X-manness about it or x menness about it and that sort of witches that are also sort of superheroes but also they're undercover and yeah I really really love this the ending oh my goodness what a cliffhanger but I haven't read the shadow cabinet yet and I need to I think that's something that I definitely want to head to this spooky season which like I said I believe runs from before Halloween really in the lead up to and then way past Christmas and the reason for that is in part due to some of the stories in this anthology of Susan Hills which includes one of my favourite ghost stories at The Woman in Black which I think is just a brilliant revenge ghost tale. It's got a house that's isolated, it's got, oh, it's, it, honestly think about it, I think also because I love the play and I'm hoping to go and see that over the Christmas period which leads me back to my point, thank you very much. Well majority of Susan Hill's ghost stories and there are plenty of them are set on or around Christmas Eve and people telling stories of ghosts or ghostly tales or ghost stories actually Simon on <laughs> Christmas Eve and that's what happens with The Woman in Black and yeah I just think it is brilliant. I, yeah, I love it. The revenge, the revenge. Then we have another haunting tale that actually was another one that mum recommended in her video and I'm not copying her technically because I gave her that book as it was my favourite book from the Costa 
shortlist the year that I judged. It wasn't our overall winner, but it was my particular favourite. I think I can say that now that the Costa is no more, although hello to the Nero Book Awards. It is The Haunting of Henry Twist by Rebecca F. John. And this is all about Henry Twist, who um, we meet him, he is married, and then she dies in a tragic accident and he has to take on looking after his uh, child alone. As he does so, this mysterious man appears into his life who may or may not be a, um, or like almost a reincarnate of all the spirit of his wife. And this book looks at that, it looks at what makes family. It's just got an eerie, creepy offness about it. It's kind of queer, but also queer, if you know what I mean. And looks at sexuality and all sorts. And I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And I mean, the cover alone, it gives you the vibe. It gives this also just remind me of a Doris Day film, uh, Midnight Lace. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but it's all set on a really creepy, foggy square. And every time I see this cover, it reminds me of that brilliantly camp horror creepy movie. That is really creepy actually, because it's got a really creepy voice in it. Ugh. Then on to an author that I would say is for me, not the queen of scream exactly, but the queen of spooky shenanigans kind of books. So books that very much either feature ghosts or they feature, well in one case, saints. Um, all supernatural elements but told in one sort of set in reality but also in a really brilliantly humour-filled way. So they are unsettling but also make you chill. And that is Jess Kidd and this is himself which is set in a small town in Ireland where there was a murder years ago and you witnessed the murder and it is really quite full on. I remember being quite shocked when I read that. And then we meet um, 20, how many years? 26 years later, um, a young man comes back wanting to find out what happened to his mother and it's how they're linked. But this man can talk to ghosts, ghosts keep appearing. Um, there's a hilarious... <laughs> mentioning this. I, well, I guess because I just find it funny. I do find a little bit of toilet humour funny, although I found the poo in Curse Bunny a little bit much. But um, there's, a, there's some, some brilliant lines about flatulence in this that will really make you chortle if you're as childish as me. But I was expecting not to get on with this because, oh, talking ghosts, but I just really loved it. The way Jess Kidd writes character and atmosphere, and actually in one of her later books, a really sexy ghost, is um, just brilliant. So can't recommend Jess Kidd to you enough at this time of year. Then for a vampiric tale, I think that's the term, I have Woman Eating by Claire Coda, which I read last year and I didn't talk enough about. This is the American edition, which I think is stunning. And this is about a, well, a what we would appear to see as a young woman who has left her mother in a home. Both of them are way older than they appear because they are vampires. However, they've not been living off human blood, they've been living off pig's blood, and now this young woman has to kind of go it alone. And whilst this is all going on, it's very much a, a book about how much we consume, the obsession with food, and how we go about getting food, as well as what it's like to be a woman of colour um, in society at the moment. And also, I guess in a way it's about ageing, um, which I think has only just come to me now, but I thought this was Brill. And actually I kind of, again, it's another book that I read a little bit too quickly. Actually, that just links to the consumerism element that I was talking about with this. But yeah, I thought this was great. Would really, really recommend. And um, yeah, get your mitts on it if you've not read it. Then I have, I want to say another Queen of Scream, but not Queen of Unease is how I would put it. Um, and that is Daphne du Maurier. And this is The Birds, which I believe there is a new 50th anniversary edition of coming soon. Now this has not only The Birds in it, which became the famous Hitchcock movie. I will say the short story I think is way better because in the movie, it's all about these big birds, particularly seagulls. But in this, it's like how scary like a wren could be or a blue tit or a starling. I mean, it's just so brilliantly done. Done. There's also Kiss Me Again Stranger in here, which is a, an easy tale that I would really, really recommend. And uh, The Apple Tree, which when I was reading, oh gosh, what book was it that I read recently that really, really reminded me of The Apple Tree? What book have I read recently that had something like The Apple Tree in it? 
Anyway, this video could go on for hours if I keep dawdling over what, what that book is. But yeah, anyway, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing book. Then we, oh, it nearly came to me. Oh, I know, it was by Camilla Shamsey. It was her short story uh, about a mythological creature from Indian folklore and it was up for the BBC National Short Story Award. There we go, I got there in the end. Anyway, next on to a book that, again, I read this for the Costa Book Awards the year that I was judging the debut um, category. I have also judged the overall winner. That was a few years later. And I thought this was absolutely brilliant. And I don't think this has had as much attention as it should get. It is The Upstairs Room by Kate Marie Brown. And this is, I mean, that's a corking cover. This is about a couple who decide to rent this Victorian house and they can't really afford it. And so as time goes on, they realise they're going to have to take on a lodger. And when the lodger moves in, little things that have been slightly odd happening in the house seem to happen more often and become odder. And so it's how the history of the house starts to come to the fore, but also how fractures in a relationship leave space for odder things to occur. And I think this is great. And then last of my recommendations is some non-fiction. And it is The Haunting of Alma Fielding by Kate Summerscale. And the reason I picked this up is all down to Alan Carr raving about it on his Instagram ages ago. And ages ago, I got round to reading it not long after that. And this is a, well, it says a true ghost story, which is based around the case of Alma Fielding, which happened in, I want to say the 1930s. Yeah, it is the 1930s. I can't remember if it's the 30s or 50s. And got a lot of traction and brought in uh, kind of a lot of theory around trying to find out if ghosts exist or not. So it also looked at spiritualism, it looked at those who are um, sceptic and if there was a con going on and all that. And Kate Summerscale is fantastic at like creating these really great narrative non-fiction books. Like for example, um, The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher, which is um, based around one of the first murder cases to have a detective um, leading it and this like I said is about a well haunting and a true ghost story though so it's quite different but completely gripping completely fascinating you learn loads and I shall leave you to read it and see if you believe that Alma Fielding was haunted or not. Now I had five books that I was actually going to read this week but as I said I'm still a little bit slumpy and also I knew that Jen was doing a uh, spooky halloween -y, um or planning to do a spooky halloween -y reading book. So I thought, oh, I don't want people thinking that I'm copying her. So I decided not to read these five books, but they are high on my TBR still. The first one is Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alison Rumpit, which is a haunted house tale uh, that looks at trans rights at the same time. Then we have a monstrous tale, Patricia Wants to Cuddle, which I believe is both queer, looks at reality TV, looks at people's desire to be famous in a really interesting way. This is the American edition, which I just think is absolutely gorgeous. Then we have A Bored Gay Werewolf by Tony Santarella. There's a theme here because all of the books that I wanted to read were supernatural and queer. And um, we have Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens, which I've been meaning to read for ages, which is told from the point of view of a lesbian ghost. And it's when uh, Frederick Chopin and George Sand and her children travel to a monastery in Mallorca in 1838. And this ghost is there. And I think first to broad on what's going on with them. And last but not least of those books that I was going to read was Chlorine by Jade Song. This is a tale of mermaids and is also a novel that I think has quite a bit of body horror in it. I'm really interested in what footnote are publishing because it, it tends to be quite queer, both fiction and non-fiction. But at some point I will read this. And also I like the idea of this because quite often mermaids are seen as good things, like quite cute. And oh, look at those fins flapping. I like the idea of there being an ominous side to them. Moving on to two books though, that I'm definitely gonna be reading very soon. And I think one of them I may even start this very day because I'm about to finish another short story collection. And once I have, I'd like to head to The Ghost Stories of Edith Wharton. I love this edition, I think it's beautiful. Can you see the bats? I think they're great. I can't work out if they're meant to be ghostly eyes or something or not. Either way, it's stunning, would have this as a wallpaper, won't lie. I love 
Edith Wharton. She is one of my favourite classic writers. I haven't read any of her ghost stories and I think this will just be a real treat to head to maybe one or two every evening just to give myself a little bit of a chill and possibly a thrill. The other one I'm going to be reading is The Other Side of Mrs Wood by Lucy Barker. I will be doing an event with Lucy at West Kirby Bookshop on the 21st of November where we'll be talking about this which is a novel about two competing spiritualist mediums and I just think I'm going to app absolutely love it. We'll be heading to those two kind of imminently and maybe these ones in the lead up to Christmas. We shall see. I would love to know in the comments down below what your favourite spooky tales are, be they supernatural, be they properly scary, properly gruesome, make you not want to get out of bed. Let me know all of those down below because I'm always keen to hear your recommendations and um, yeah let me know if you've read any of the ones that I've already read, hold off on the ones that I haven't read yet because I haven't read them. I'm excited about them. Let's talk about them after I've read them because I will be reading them, as I've mentioned. <sighs> Breathe, Simon, quite soon. Thank you, as always, for watching and joining me and let's keep chatting in the comments down below. I will also link, well, I'll leave a list of the books down below along with links to my Instagram, my, uh, I was going to say YouTube, but hello, you're on it. My X, as they call it, which always makes me want to say Xtube, which I don't think exists anymore. Let's not talk about it, let's not talk about it. Um, and also my wish list and my Patreon and all those things down below. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.